All right, uh, now that we have our panel system, we're actually going to make it um, into a, a facade system now. So we're going to uh, make multiple arrays of it. So the first thing I want to do it, uh, is uh, make it into um, a circular uh, facade system. So uh, we need to basically start with this almost like a polygonal edge and then um, populate uh, more of these panels and see uh, where we end up with, uh, okay? And um, we can start with like a large num number of edges for the polygon. So I'm going to go to the beginning and create a polygon. So let's start with um, a radius value, let's say 12. And we want to have a lot of edges um, let's say we want 32. Um, now, the trick here is if you extrude this upward, let's say we want to make it into a surface uh, of like a story high, like three meters. I actually need uh, more panels. Let's make them all the way up to 60. So these go are going to be scaled up. Um, or scaled down in this case. But the problem here is uh, once you extrude a polygon and you want to extract these individual panels from it, the surface orientations might come off differently. So um, one trick I do here is to explode um, this curve into um, curve segments. And then if we extrude these curve segments, then it kind of uh, ends up being more organized. So we already have, uh, for instance, 20, um, sorry, 60 surfaces. So if you look at individual surfaces now, so I'm going to do a list item and go through some of these, let's say go from 50 to uh, 5 to 20. So if I look at the fifth panel and deconstruct on the representation. So remember that we are looking for this sort of um, alignment, right? So we, we have 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, so we want this sort of clockwise or counterclockwise uh, orientation starting from the bottom uh, edge. So if I look at the point list on the single panel, let's say point 2. So you can see it starts from here, 0, 1, 2, 3. So if I move to um, along the surface, the point orientations kind of stay consistent, which is what we want. So once I have the extrusion, I can simply give those extrusions here, but we have to be careful here. So let's say, actually, let's try it with a single facade system, facade panel. So if I give this here, um, now you can see that the extrusion is working, but this edge is not uh, working the way we want it to. So this kind of requires some sort of flipping. So we can come back here, reduce the amplitude a bit. And if I switch to another panel, that error seems to be consistent, right? So we, we can basically, uh, we need to do some sort of flipping on, on, this, um, on this edge. So it's actually right here. So we flipped this top corner. It seems like we don't need to do that anymore. So let's actually connect this and this. So this only happens with, to the bottom edge and that kind of works now, right? So zero, one, two, three, that remains consistent. Now, what I want to do is make sure that this is going to work for all the facade uh, panels. So you can uh, simply do it for a bunch of uh, panels now. For instance, you can do a sub list and we can get a sub subset um, of um, of panels. So let's say we want to set the domain from 0 to 5. So we get the first 5. And if I connect this straight up, um, this actually works fine. Uh, so this is great, actually. So it's already showing me all the panels and all these connections are also working because the data is correlated. So if I move the scaling uh, move the extrusions, they all seem to work fine. I can also uh, hide some of these uh, visualizations. Let's hide these surfaces. 
and let's hide this part as well so you can see that that's actually working really well so we can bake the set and look at the geometry well this oh this didn't actually connect the way we want it to so uh, probably here the index is um, turned off actually it's kind of connecting the bottom and the top corners let's fix that quickly so um, this edge actually needs to connect from here to here and we probably need to flip this edge right here there you go so that's fixed and we don't need to subset anymore and now that we know everything is working we can actually connect it to all the surfaces now we have all the panels working with the single parameters, right? So we have basically the extrusions, we have the evaluation, and we have basically the scaling of uh, the panels. So what I can do now is uh, basically animate some of these parameters. Uh, for instance, we wanted to make this uh, undulation uh, transform a bit. So uh, one way to do that is to connect not a single parameter here, but a series of parameters. So uh, we have to do it uh, based on the count of the panels we have. So we have 60 panels. So I can simply do a graph mapper here uh, and connect a range. We have 60 values, so I can do um, a list length here or you already have a segment count here so you can connect 60 um, if we feed this in to the graph mapper this will give us um, 61 values actually so let's make it like a sign summation or we can actually make it into a sign function let's make it into a simple sign so the outputs are 61 values so what we need to do is uh, right click here go to the expression and do x minus 1 now what that does is that this will give me the the values I can use for evaluating these points uh, basically these parameters right so we we are supplying the same value for all these panels but what if we want to give an individual parameter to each of them now here we have to be a bit careful because uh, here you're seeing that the data is grafted uh, which basically means that we have multiple streams of data running in with the same script so we are applying the same rules to 60 panels so if you supply a single list uh, the data would not be matched correctly it's because um, the here the, the data is grafted but the the list we have here it's not it's a single list so we need it to look a bit like this right with the with the paths so we can do a graft here if you graft this now these will become individual parameters so here you can see the path is now matching to these parameters here and we can create a number link here so that this will be easier to connect so if you replace it here if I connect the grafted data to the numbers now we basically have an animated um, animated facade group right so this sine wave will basically create undulating series so if you uh, bake it bake one of them let's actually look we can see the uh, the movement right so this is basically um, evaluating the points um, in the middle of the facade so you can basically get uh, the surface configuration so all I had to do was change this um, evaluating parameter um, now we can add one more thing to this which is um, basically to make copies of it or you can make uh, multiple polygons and uh, you can give individual graphs to it there are a bunch of ways we can actually um, animate this um, one thing I can do is basically create um, rotated copies of these polygons and supply it with the same script that could be I think interesting 
So let's uh, give it a quick shot. So rather than using a single polygon now, I'm going to disable this. I'm going to basically create a series of polygons. I'm going to combine a series. We can make it into, let's say four floors. And we want the floors to go up by uh, three here. So that will be our step size. So if I do X, Y, Z, this would be the Z location of the floor slabs. And these will be basically my polygon locations. Now we have four polygons and we need, we basically need this data to be matched here. So probably um, if I graphed it, that should basically work. Um, but I want to make sure that this works. Let's actually make a graph here too and enable it. Well, it works because I, by grafting it, I'm basically sending each individual polygon to the same script. So we have basically stacked copies of the same polygons. Well, if you don't want that, uh, you can disable this part before grafting it. You can actually give them some rotation. If we do rotate, um, for instance, we can rotate an object in a plane. Um, we can rotate these polygons, but we have to be careful here. For instance, um, we can basically divide 360 degrees into four um, rotations so that they will all look different. That could be a strategy. Um, let's see. So we have a series here. 0, 3, 6, 9. I can probably create another series. So now that we know we have, for instance, 60 segments, we can basically rotate it, um, I think, multiplications of six degrees, right? Six panels, 60 panels basically make, uh, each of them uh, basically occupies six degrees of uh, the circle. So if I make, um, how should we do this? So let's make it a series again and make it 60 this time. And 0, 60, 120, and 180. I guess that should work. So we can make this into radians. So now these are rotated polygons. So if I graph this now, they should actually um, work with the same script, but they should come out rotated. So we can only see it in the end product. Um, let's actually bake it to see. Um, they should look stacked. So here, you can actually see it, right? So if I look at the section here, this is kind of in the middle, this is kind of upward. So we basically made it um, a bit different in the vertical direction. Um, we are applying the same script, uh, but you can see that the um, the undulation is kind of rotated, so it kind of makes it look different. So we can make it as many as we want. Uh, let's actually make it all the way up to uh, 360. I'm going to make it connect here. And let's make actually eight floors. There we go. And we can make it a bit more smoother. So let's make it like this. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but um, maybe we should actually make it a bit more undulating. Let's actually add more undulation. Let's add more to the graph. So we want to create more movement. You can see here the, um, the two stacks are kind of different, right? This is longer, this is kind of shorter. How about this? You can actually fine tune it. All right, there we go. So you can see here, this is different than this, but that movement actually exists somewhere here. Actually, um, maybe we haven't done it right. 
I'm only seeing it at the bottom, not on the top. Um, there's probably an issue there. Let's actually look at it here. So we have grafted data, 60 values here. What's happening here? This is exactly. So we have 480 values coming in. So all these evaluations, they should be the same. But you can see here the I'm only getting the first graph at the bottom. So these actually didn't work. Mm, maybe we have to graph these as well. So I'm just wondering if we have to double the graph. Let's see. I graph it again. Nope. Maybe we have to duplicate this. The, or the amount of panels we have. So if I do duplicate, um, that could make it a bit more complex though. I'm trying to be careful. So we have 59. So grafting, and probably we have to make this run the same way as 80 here. So for instance, if I made a duplicate here, duplicate data, make it eight times. So I'm going to supply, I'm going to basically generate eight graphs before I graphed it. So now if you look at the output, we have 480 values, but inside of these, we will have the same graph parameters, right? So they will be correlated with the surfaces. So we have 480 surfaces and 480 parameters. So if I enable it here, now this is basically working. Okay, so if I bake it, now we have the same graph mapped onto each um, facade group, but they're kind of rotating, so it, they look different, right? So you can see um, they're all kind of undulating but they're all different because we rotated each individual polygon uh, 60 degrees. And that kind of gives us nice uh, movement. So um, a few tricks I would recommend is um, you don't need to bake all of these panels simultaneously, right? So if you want to give some of them um, transparent material, you can actually bake them separately. Uh, we have them here. So for instance, these could be solid panels and these could be glass panels. I'll just um, make them visible here, for instance, and just extract these and then make them, I'll just show it with the color swatch. Uh, so let's make this um, kind of a darker tone. And let's make these kind of a lighter tone. And I'm going to hide these. So there you go. So you can see the side panels could be basically opaque, uh, whereas the vertical uh, quad panels could be transparent, so you can bake them separately. Okay, I hope uh, you liked this tutorial. It was a fun exercise. Um, I'll be doing more uh, tutorials on facade systems. So if you're interested in uh, learning more about these geometry, uh, components uh, stick around.